Hey, what's up guys, Boba Rail here, and today I've got a breakdown for Isanzo's 8th dev blog. Today's video, we'll talk about the game's cosmetic system and show off some more weapon models. So, let's jump right into this. Alright, so let's start with these cosmetics, and we have a lot of footage to work with this week because they released some images, as well as a short YouTube video showing them off. Really appreciate this, it makes it a lot easier to get footage for the video, and as you can see, there's a wide array of helmets, mustaches, and uniforms that can be customized here. The best part about this to me is that everything shown here looks pretty historically authentic, and to quote them directly, the uniforms for these classes are based on the unit and historical variations of these units as they may have been seen on the Italian front. So I think all of these look great, and I'm very impressed with how many options are available here, but with that, two questions come up. The first one is how will we be able to get access to all of these different skins, and should we expect some sort of monetization associated with them? To answer these, I'll once again quote from the blog directly. Furthermore, as a player gains experience in the game, uniform options will become far less pristine. Some outright filthy, depending on the deployment of the unit and player veterancy. In this way, every player has the opportunity to give themselves a truly unique appearance, while remaining historically authentic. How all of these variants will be made available to players in-game or via DLC is something we'll explore in a future dev blog. So with that, they are basically saying that they don't know or are choosing to withhold how this may apply to being monetized, but at least some cosmetics will be unlocked with playtime. Even if they do monetize some of this stuff, so long as it's mostly just glasses slash pipes and other off uniforms, I'm totally fine with it. I don't really care much about cosmetics in first person games, but once again, their dedication to historical authenticity is something I greatly respect and hope they maintain moving forward. So that's pretty much it in the way of cosmetics, so let's show off the two guns that were showcased this week. Here we have the Roth Stayer 1907, and its relative, the Stayer Han. Both of these will be issued to the Austro-Hungarians, and they specifically mention the Roth's use in cavalry units in the blog. So perhaps that's hinting at rideable cavalry in the game? I don't know, that's just speculation, but it's an interesting idea, and I'd love to see how that sort of unit could affect the gameplay flow. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys. I hope this gave you a better understanding of the fundamentals of Isanzo as we slowly inch closer to its release. Thanks for watching this. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.